Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Frank here. We're continuing the build of the Cub Cadet Mini Bulldozer. This is going to start out season two. We're into a new year, so we're going to call this season two, episode one. Okay, so recap where we are. For those of you just joining, um, we built this frame with two drive axles. You have to go back and look at episodes uh, three, four, and five to see how we modified the Cup Cadet uh, hydrostatic transmissions, front and rear. The rear one drives the left track. The front one drives the right track. And we have a high wheel here that will tension the track. The axles are fixed in their position. Uh, only using one sprocket. You have a sprocket on the rear here. That's drive. And a sprocket on the front here. That's the drive for the right track. All right, so we've got to the point where we finished the uh, track tensioner wheel. Now this wheel mounts on the box beam here. This hole, which will be enlarged to three quarters of an inch, will support the uh, large pin going through here. This is a connection point for the track tensioner. And this whole wheel will pivot up here, up to tighten the track and down to loosen the track. So it can be removed or replaced or serviced uh, and also to tension it as it, as it might stretch. The rest of the frame here is a 14 horsepower Kohler single cylinder engine. There's two hydrostatic transmissions. There's one here, there's one in the rear, and the controls for them are here, one for the left track, and one for the right track. And each transmission is infinitely variable, forward and reverse. So you can operate one track forward, the other track in reverse, both forward, both reverse whatever you choose to do. So this is not the traditional open differential with brakes arrangement as most such uh, dozers have been, have been built in the past. These are custom modified transmissions that work independently. Uh, so that's kind of exciting to, to have, that, um, have that capability on a tractor. So this machine will spin in place which the open differential brake arrangement won't allow you to do. Okay, so where are we now? I'm at the point where this frame, so the so-called track frame, which consists of this box beam and these three laterals, needs to come off the tractor. It's held on by a series of U-bolts up through a load plate that's welded to the, to the frame. Uh, I need to take that off to finish welding the laterals. They're welded only on the top right now, so we need to weld them all the way around. And I need to drill holes in the bottom of this beam to mount the bogey wheels. The bogey wheels are on carriers. They're assembled here. These are, of course, upside down. There's a total of six carriers, and these will turn them upside down, attach them to the bottom of the box beam, and the chain for the track will run through here, and these wheels will run on the, on the track pads. For the track, I'm using uh, 81XH conveyor chain, which is a 2.6 inch pitch chain, and I have already determine the chain length. I had the tension wheel. I had this tension wheel here mounted and tensioned and I figured that there are 31, going to be 31 track pads on each side. So that's in the last video we accomplished that. And that's kind of a milestone determining the exact length of chain and that I could tension it and that sort of thing. So that's, that's um, uh, <laughs> an accomplishment. 
I don't need to sweat those details anymore from now on. It's basically just assembly to get to um, an operating, operating tractor. Of course, up here, there'll be a dash and a grill, front grill and a hood over it. And there'll be components from a Cub Cadet. And those components are actually sitting here. Here's the dash. It's been cleaned up and primed. Here's the hood. It's been cleaned up and primed. And the front grill leaning up against the wood pile over there. That needs, still needs to be cleaned up and, and uh, primed and eventually repainted. And of course the dash and the hood will get painted Cup Cadet White. Um, okay, so that's where we are. Things we're going to do this episode. We're going to take the track frame off and do some, some work to it. So I have the bogey carriers labeled and the holes marked. So I will drill those holes after I take the, the box, the frame off. All right, need to do a similar setup on the other side. And I have the lumber and this other beam, box beam underneath it to raise the floor up. Otherwise I can't get my jack under the tractor. So that's just basically to keep raise the, the floor up in effect Before I take the last set of U-bolts out, I'm going to make alignment marks. the track frame. I've got welds only across the tops of these three laterals. So we'll need to roll it over, weld the bottom. We'll do that. 
and then I've got holes marked for the for the bogies and so we've got holes to drill for the bogies and then we need to drill this hole out to three quarters of an inch and weld collars to it <clears throat> okay so let's get this thing oriented so we can work on it Okay, so that completes the welds of the laterals. I'm going to drill some holes now in the box beams. I'm going to use my Evolution electromagnetic base drill to drill these holes. Now I've got a half inch hole here and I'm going to enlarge it to 13 16 Now my shaft that's going to go through here is three quarters by drilling a slightly larger hole that will give me the opportunity to align the shaft perpendicular to this tube in case there's any variation in the position of the holes from one side to the other I'm going to weld a collar, a three quarter inch ID collar around the hole so that will be the close fit for the shaft um, and then the slightly larger hole will provide clearance and allow me to align the shaft with the surface perpendicular to the surface of this tube so that's that's the reason for going for a slightly larger drill bit and of course this is an electromagnetic electromagnetic base turn the switch on it's stuck to the metal with 1300 kilograms of force 2600 pounds so it's not going anywhere. Turn the electromagnetic off and we can align the drill with the... Now what I've got, since I've got a half inch hole, I've got to align this center point pin with the center of the hole. And I think I've got that pretty close. All 
All right, turn the electromagnet, electromagnet on, and it's not going anywhere. Slightly off center here. All right, so now I'm going to drill the holes for the bogey carriers. I've got these, this box being marked on both sides, so I'm going to go down here. I've center punched each of the marks. This is a 7 16 again, slightly larger than the 3 8 inch bolt, which will hold the carriers, but that gives, you know, a little bit of, little bit of play in the holes for alignment purposes, and so... All right, so that's all the holes for the left side bogey carrier carriers. I haven't marked the holes yet for the right side carriers. There's one more carrier that I need to build. I was short a bogey wheel, so I've only got five of the six carriers actually built, but I can at least mark two of them. So I'll do that. I've got two of the three bogey carriers clamped to the 
right side box beam so I can mark for the for the holes and like I said I'm waiting for the other caster wheels these are cast iron roller bearing wheels if you didn't see the last episode, this is what they look like. They have a sleeve, and then there's a roller bearing inside, and, it, and, they're, and the wheels are greasable. So I have three. They shorted me on the shipment, and I'm waiting for them to ship the missing, missing wheels. Let me finish marking. So I can't drill the middle two holes. I'm drilling them to fit. Even though I was careful to get these holes in the same spot, there's no guarantee that you know they would line up if I didn't mark them specifically. So this is this is one right. So this is really the front of the tractor. And this is three right. This is the rear of the tractor. That's how I mark the other ones. Left, one, two, and three. All right, I need to mark the other side. All right, so that's all the holes I can drill right now until I get the last bogey wheel, the last caster, so I can assemble that carrier. I, I don't assemble the carrier until I get the wheels because I use the wheels as an alignment mechanism. So, and I'm not, I mean, I could use, uh, potentially use some other wheels, but there's no guarantee that the wheels I get will be exactly the same. So I don't want to risk that. I'm going to use the actual wheels that I'm going to use on the carrier. So waiting for that wheel to come and the bearings to come for the other wheel. If you look at the last episode, you'll see how I wound up in this predicament. Uh, I have to say this little uh, Evolution magnetic electromagnetic drill press works pretty well. I mean, these drilling all these holes by hand would be a lot of work uh, through this quarter inch steel, and so uh, this is this is the first time I've I mean I've played I've tested it out before, but this is the first time I've actually used it in. An application I purchased this last summer and I purchased the circular saw that you saw me use in the last episode it works pretty well I did get a set of the special drill bits and uh, the the drill bits are kind of unique for this this kind of a drill uses annular annular drill bits so this is a, this is the set of drill bits, and you can see that they're hollow. So in this particular one is what it's one and a sixteenth in diameter. It only cuts around; it only cuts a circle out and leaves a plug in the middle. And the advantage of that is you're cutting much less metal than if you had a full size drill bit of this size. So, and these are very sharp. I mean, they're like razor sharp and then there's a pin which goes in the end of the drill bit that helps you locate the hole and it's it's um, it is spring loaded so it pushes the plug out when you're finished so this type of a drill is it clamps to the metal workpiece. Now, I am having a, a slight issue with it on this tubing because the tubing is not perfectly flat. That electromagnet to get the full effect needs to be on relatively thick metal, like probably half an inch to get the full magnetic force, and it has to be perfectly flat. And this rectangular tubing is not perfectly flat. It has a very slight curve to it so you don't get the full clamping force but if you go slowly it seems to be it seems to be adequate so 
We'll come back when I get the bogey wheel and build the last carrier, mark, put it on here, mark it. We'll drill the last set of holes. Uh, and then, um, meanwhile, I can shift my focus to welding on the three quarter inch collars on the, where the tensioner arm attaches. I have, these are the collars. I only have two collars right now. So I need to get six more. I need eight collars. So that collar get welded here. I'll be get one one on the other side, and then there'll be another pair welded to the arm of the. Oh, oh here it is. Welded on the inside or perhaps on the outside. It depends on my spacing, probably on the outside of the tensioner arm. And so that gives a much greater bearing surface on the shaft than just the quarter inch thick metal here. So those collars, I need a total of eight. I need a total of eight collars. I've only got two, but I, I can run over to two my favorite place, Tractor Supply. They've got them. At least that's where I got these. Need to run over there and get six more. And uh, then we'll come back and weld those on. My missing, my missing bogey wheel came late yesterday. So I went ahead and put together the final bogey carrier. Um, just finished uh, welding it up about 10 or 15 minutes ago. It's still cooling. But I did use it to mark the holes, and I went ahead and drilled the other last set of holes. So I've got all the bogey holes drilled, and I'm setting up here to weld the uh, tension shaft collar to the beam. Got a couple of magnets here. I've used a framing square, and this is the this three-quarter inch shaft is perpendicular to the beam. So I think I'm in a good spot. I'm going to go ahead and tack the collar here and then we'll move, put a collar on the other side and tack and tack it as well. These collars have set screws and I'm going to leave the uh, set screws there. I'm likely to take the set screw out and put in a grease fitting, um, which would make sense. So got this one set up. I'm going to get the welder hooked up. We'll tack this one. I found two more collars. I thought I had bought four of these three quarter inch collars. I only saw two yesterday when I was looking. There were another pair sitting on the toolbox. So I do have four collars, though I still need four more. The local tractor supply did not have, where I bought these, did not have any more. <laughs> That wraps up the prep work for the bogey carriers and the tensioner wheel pivot point. 
The last thing I need to do with this frame before I put it back underneath the tractor is to close off these ends. So I need to cut four, four by six, roughly four by six plates and weld them on, cover up the ends. So that's the next task. I need to model those in Fusion 360 and we'll cut them out on the plasma table. I think I'll use 3 sixteenths, which is actually I think this tubing is 3 sixteenths, not quarter. I think I might have said quarter earlier. Anyway, 3 sixteenths. So I'll cut some pieces to fit on the ends there and we'll we'll weld that up. Alright, we'll come back when we do that. <laughs> All right, so that gives me the plates I need to, for the close off the ends of the box beams. There's almost no, no dross on these pieces, so the cutter did a good job. I think the key to, to this cutter is changing out the electrode and the nozzle frequently. Because that, if, if that gets eroded or worn, and they're considered consumables, you get misfires or other problems. So. I think that's the key and I just put a new electrode and nozzle in it and I've been buying, I bought a bunch of them. So let's check out the fit on this. All right, so I have two little notches for the at the base there and then So I think that's that's a pretty good pretty good fit. I should have made this a little bit larger radius. I made it eighth inch thinking it would be a quarter inch diameter circle. It's it's smaller than I expected. But that's a close that's a close fit. So I'll go ahead and we'll tack all these on and then um, weld them off.
when I mentioned a few minutes ago that the tractor supply didn't have any of the three quarter inch shaft collars, I forgot that we have a good Ace hardware here. And um, darned if they didn't have the exact same collars. And I also picked up some of these. These are one inch, one inch collars and some bronze bushings, which are three quarter inch ID. So, I mean, that's another option. I haven't decided what I'm going to do, but we'll make a call on that. When we get a little bit closer. Got a little more work to do. We got to get the box beam back on, the bogies attached and that sort of stuff. So, um, before we put the tensioner back on, we'll get to that shortly. You want a treat? Uh oh, Butchie heard that. You guys want a treat? Get a treat, Brew Brew. Come on. He's busy eating his gummy. Anybody want a treat? Look at this. Butchie's such a good boy sitting. Brew Brew, you want a treat? Brew Brew, come here. There we go. It's a little bit surprising that he was, he must have been, he must have been really hungry to pass up the little, little treat. I've been out of the, out of the shop much of the day because I've been welding and stuff out here. So this is where their, their food dishes are. So he hasn't probably had much to eat today. <laughs> He's starving. <laughs> so what do we say, huh? Huh? Being a good boy. Where's Butchie? You being a good boy? Huh? Are you being being daddy's good boys? Yeah. You're a good puppy. Can you sit? Can you sit? That's a good boy. Yeah. What a good boy. You're watching Brew Brew eat. You got some, you got your food over here. You can eat. If you're hungry. Uh, that's funny. He's always, Butchie's always hungry. He's keeping an eye on what Brutus is eating. Okay, you guys. You're a good boy. Yeah. You're my good puppy. So Butchie goes back and forth and inspects what Brutus is eating to make sure that what Brutus has is not better than what's in his dish. And there are times when he'll push Brutus out of his dish because Butchie is a little bit of a I won't say he's a bully, but he's he's the alpha. So he pushes Brutus around a little bit, and um, he wants to make sure that Brutus doesn't have um, better food than him or more food than him. Um, so it's kind of funny to watch them. They have their own personalities. This guy's he's and you know. And Butchie's got 10, at least 10 pounds on Brutus. 
when they run around, Brutus is faster. He outruns Butchie, no problem. Butchie's carrying an extra 10 or 15 pounds. I think um, Butchie weighs 92, I think, and Brutus is around 80, 80 pounds, something like that. Um, Butchie was pup number one in the litter. Brutus was pup number three. So they both came from the same litter, so they're brothers. Um, and they are five and a half years old. I think that's right. So they are basically inseparable. They, they, if they're out running around, they're together. Most of the time, anyway. All right. We're going to let them eat.
Well, that was tedious to say the least, trying to get the sprocket you know, on the center line of the tube with this wheel on the center line of the tube on both sides. So I think I'm pretty close on, on those. I need that because I need it to, the track to line up with the bogies, which are bogey carriers. The bogies are centered on this beam. So there's a little bit extra play here. So it's not super critical as long as it's within you know, a sixteenth or even eighth of an inch should be fine. Okay, I've got that all tightened up. Let's get the bogeys on. Seems a little silly painting, priming things which will undoubtedly be scoured clean by dirt, but I can't resist the sense of necessity to prime bare metal. I hit the welds, you know, in some of the areas that might not see as much um, much dirt. Need to take feel like I need to take care of that stuff because once they're on the tractor, really going to be inaccessible. So uh, I'm not planning on painting all those areas yellow, only the, the visible areas once I, get, once I get it assembled. I was careful not to paint over the notations on them, uh, which assign them to specific positions on the, on the dozer. Um, box beam. All right, we'll come back once that stuff's dry, put them on the tractor. I've got the tensioner wheel mounted here through the bushings and I'm getting ready to weld these collars, the collars on each side to the uh, support arm got a bolt through here, got a castle nut. I'll drill a hole and put a cotter pin through that to hold that. Got the same arrangement on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple small welds on, on those collars. And I've got the left side bogies in place, so I need to bolt them on. I'll do that. Let me, I'm going to weld the collars first.
Well, that's kind of amazing, all those bolts fit through.
So this is the approximate position of the upper link, which will act as a turnbuckle and pushes these two points apart to tension, to push this wheel up to tension it. And you can turn it the other way and untension it. Uh, so I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and tack this this point right here, and we'll continue to work. Out. We'll do it on the other side. I need to cut these this shaft off. Cut about an inch and a half off. I've got a mark here. Drill hole through both sides. Lynch pins go through this shaft on each side, and. I think once I get these on and get the linchpins in that shaft, uh, we may be able to put the chain on. Well, let's see what we can get done here. All right, so that gets us a couple steps closer to putting the track on this uh, this baby. Got the tension wheel and the tensioner installed. I've got it on both sides. Got the 
this uh, mounting point welded. I'll probably run weld around the other two sides at some point. Didn't want to fully weld it quite yet. I only, only have a couple of loose ends to take care of to uh, wrap, wrap this part of it up. Cut these shafts on both sides to the proper length. Drill holes through them put for linch pins, which is a pin like this, which you open it up. Tough to do with one hand. Open it up, put it through the hole, and then snap it closed, and it stays in the shaft. So it's a common pin used on farm implements. This is actually a sm rather small one, but maybe on a smaller tractor. So a pair of those will prevent the shaft from moving side to side. I mean, I also have set screws here that I plan to tighten, but I don't want to risk the shaft, you know, the set screws coming loose and the shaft working its way out. So this is a safety measure to keep the shaft from going anywhere. So I have uh, the one chain that we already measured. I'll put that, need to put that back on this side. Need to measure and cut the chain for the other side. So a couple more things to do. All right, I think that uh, wraps up this episode, uh, season two, episode one. We've gotten to the point where we can put the chain on and test out the drive system. I, I can hook a drill up to the drive shaft and we can drive both uh, transmissions with a drill and then test the track running on these wheels. So we'll come back next time. I think that's where we'll be is fitting the other chain, putting this chain back on. I need to work on the, the master link they gave me for this chain protrudes out of both sides of the chain too much to clear the idler wheels. So I need to um, cut that and weld that link or swage it so it fits properly in these um, in, in the way I have this set up. So fitting both chains and then perhaps driving it with a drill. We'll see how everything works. And at that point, it's, you know, on to working on the tracks, track pads and that sort of thing. So I've got a lot of suggestions on how to do the track pads. Um, the main suggestion was weld a heavy plate to the chain and then bolt that plate to the actual track pad. And the only issue I have with that is the bolt heads will likely interfere with the bogey wheels because the bogey wheels straddle the chain. The chain goes between them. So the bogey wheels would run over the bolt heads unless the bolt heads were at the very edge of the track pads. So, I, and, and, the, and the purpose for recommending that is a good one. It's you know, be able to replace the track pads. But that's a lot of drilling and a lot of bolts and, you know, I don't know and creates the problem with the, do with the bogey wheels and the bolt heads. They're trying to get countersink them and put flathead bolts through and the nuts would be on the outside. It just complicates it beyond what my you know, set up here, I think justifies. So my current plan is to weld the uh, little risers to the back of the track pad and weld the chain to the y y risers or vice versa. So they'll be welded together. And if I need to service it, I'll have to just break a link, take that link out, you know, with the track pad on it and replace it. And I imagine as I'm building the track pads, I need 31 for each side. So at 62, I'll probably build a couple extras just so I have, you know, in case I'm invariably, I'm going to mess some up in the process. So I need to have some extras. 
I'll probably, I think I'm going to need to order some more plate steel. I think I'm going to make the track pads quarter inch and the backers three eighths. I have a full half a sheet of three eighths and half a sheet of quarter, a little bit more than half a sheet of quarter. Uh, I don't think that's enough quarter inch material. So I need to order that. So we'll come back next time working on the chains and hopefully get them fitted and hopefully run the transmissions with the drill and see how that works. Can't promise that, but that's the, is going to be the objective. All right. So thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already hit the thumbs up, uh, share with your friends. If they're, you have friends that have similar interests, we'll see you guys next episode.